why did this character make sense for your return to action after so many years? I said to Pierre when I first met with him that it felt crazy to me that here the, the the most emotional thing in any woman's life or almost in you know in the animal kingdom was being a mother that we're all uh, you find more rage you find more love you find more joy you find more terror um, and that no one had ever found a way to make a story that was real enough to push a character into action mode that I you know, for me to read and feel like, oh, this is what I want to do. And um, this script really did it. And I knew that in Pierre's hands, um, he's a great dad, and, you know, he directed Liam Neeson in Taken, which is really um, a, the perfect predecessor to Peppermint. Um, I knew that this movie was one that could we could do it. Right. So to what degree did you relate to Riley's um, disposition as a mother who's lost loved ones and uh... I couldn't really relate to what Riley had gone through and I, I certainly couldn't relate to what broke her and made her decide to become a vigilante because that's not something you know also when I met Pierre I said are do you believe in revenge and he said no and he said do you and I said no I don't I believe you go toward the light you don't go to the dark but then we came together and we made a movie that very much went to the dark um and so Yes, I, I don't relate to her in that way, but I do love her. And I do, um, it was easy for me to connect with her plight. Did you, do you tend to judge your characters or no? No. <laughs> you have to love your characters. Always? Always. You have to find what you love about them. And there's a lot to love about Riley. She is trying her best. She's trying to do the right thing. She is, um, she was really dealt a horrible hand. The system failed her and she's out for revenge. It's obviously a fantasy. This is not a movie that is, you know, it's, it's not telling you how anyone should act. It's just a, a fantasy version. If you like Jason Bourne or if you like Taken or if you like, you know, John Wick, this is your kind of film. Now, raising three kids will make you fit, but not this fit. Mm -hmm. What was your fight preparation like? Uh, for about three months, I did a hard hour a day with Simone De La Rue, who has a, a she's, she's kind of body by Simone is what her workout is known as. She has an app. You can do exactly what we did on there. Um, it was weights. It was body weight. It was trampoline. It was um, dance cardio. It was bands. It, it, was, it was everything. It was just a very full workout. And that was the main thing. And then I also boxed and did Krav Maga and um, then trained with the stunt team. Right. And what was it like for you? Were you happy being active? So physical? And, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I had already been, I was in good shape when this started, so I, I knew that I could push myself. You know, I don't think you could start from scratch. I was in pretty good shape. But um, it felt really good. I was so strong. <laughs> While we did the movie, I was so strong after we finished the movie that Simone and I have had to really work to take the muscle back out of my arms because I would put on a summer dress this summer and my biceps were so big I couldn't, they wouldn't fit through the armhole. So um, that has been a little bit of a funny thing. But yes, it felt great to just be so strong. There was nothing that I couldn't do. Um, which story elements, apart from the obvious um, revenge aspect of your character, Riley, uh, but, you know, the underbelly of crime, you mm -hmm. shot in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, which aspects of, of the story um, intrigue you? I'm intrigued by the idea that there is a whole other world happening right under what we see. Um, I'm always, I always love using LA as a backdrop and using parts of LA that we don't see. I've shot in Skid Row before. This was, you know, there was our set, which is basically tent city, and there were real tents on either side. You couldn't tell which street was our set. Um, and it's just a great reminder that it might be a glittery city, but it's also a city that hurts and that homelessness is a real issue. And there's something about that that, um, that brings out a humanity to the film. Was that aspect of, of Guardian Angel to mm -hmm. Riley um, also appealing to, you know, to, to round out this character? I do think it, it rounds her out because she's not someone who's out for blood, but she can't help but take care of an injustice if she sees one. For example, there's a scene where I see a little boy with a, his father, and his father is um, drunk. And I can't, she can't help but 
stop what she's doing and go and address and make sure that boy has his, the best chance that he can possibly have at being safe. Right. Now, obviously, Riley has lost loved ones, but then she's done an injustice uh, with the police and mm -hmm. the court system and things. How do you think that whole, that, that measures up to transforming her into a really a completely different person? I think that her heart is broken, but then I think her trust in the system is broken in such a way that it just, she snaps. She's, she snaps. This is not a, you know, this is not a normal person. This is not a true story. <laughs> I think she snaps and she goes off the grid and she becomes a machine. And operates like one, And do you operates think? like a machine. I mean, I think she would like to be much colder than she actually is which is why she kind of becomes the angel of the downtown area. But, um, she, yeah, she is, um, she's just a machine. And hesitates at one point as well to her own peril. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Andrew. <laughs>